Hey guys, welcome back to another edition of Arsenal Sports and today we're going to be discussing why it's a possibility that the Oklahoma City Thunder can win an NBA title this upcoming season. So to first start, we want to talk about Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook and their dynamic between each other and also Serge Ibaka and that big three right there. For those of you who haven't been paying too much attention the past couple of years, due to injuries, Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook haven't really played together for the past like two years at the same time, which has been it's, it's a weird development for two of the best five players in the entire association. And it's going to be real interesting to see how they mesh now that they're going to be playing together really for the first time in a couple of years. That's really true. And uh, that's kind of um, the most interesting thing is that even when, you know, when they were healthy and in um, – I think it was 2012 when uh, when the Thunder went to the finals, right, and played the Heat. Yes. Yeah, in 2012 there were still questions about whether uh, KD and Russ could play together and could coexist, and whether uh, Russ was trying too hard to be the alpha dog. And even though they missed the playoffs last season, Westbrook had a fantastic year, and uh, the, it was there was some talk about him being the MVP. Possibly, obviously, that didn't happen, but he was having that type of year. Um, they didn't get to the playoffs, of course, but if him and Durant could coexist, that would be a really scary team, and they can both stay healthy, of course. Right, and the thing the thing that's really interesting about it is Russell Westbrook used to be second man, and they used to talk about how he is not really, he's not really uh, perfect for the second man role. He wants to be the alpha dog, and, and it's an interesting dynamic because he's the more vocal guy and Durant's the more quiet guy, and he was the number one when they were both healthy. But now it almost seems like it's become Westbrook's team, and it's going to be interesting to see how Durant uh, reacts to that. But I'm sure that's more of a public perception than anything going on inside uh, the Oklahoma City locker room. I'm sure between those two guys, it'll be fine. But on court, it'll be interesting to see who gets the ball in the last second and stuff like that. But yeah. Not to uh, discount Serge Ibaka from this conversation, he's also been injured the past few years, and it's been a real reason why they haven't been able to advance. When your three best players are constantly hurt, it really hinders you in the playoffs. And Serge Ibaka is a great player. He's a top 30 player in his own right. And he's added a three-point shot to his game to go along with shot blocking, which is a perfect power forward in today's NBA. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, And Serge Ibaka, you know, he can... You know, we kind of keep looking for him to take the next step, but he gets injured and he's not playing consistently uh, healthy. So it's tough. It's tough to expect someone to take the next step and to develop into that. You know, you say he's top 30. He could be potentially a top 20, top 15 type player. Right. And you add that with Westbrook and Durant already, and they have good, you know, they have some good other uh, rotational players. And that could be, you know, you could talk about that team as the best team in the NBA, but right now they're not kind of getting that talk because of the injuries and because uh, teams like San Antonio are still doing it. Uh, the Warriors have surpassed them. Even the Rockets, maybe. Some people would put the Rockets ahead of the Thunder. Right, yeah. At this point, they're a real sleeper team for a title, which is something no one would have thought a couple of years ago when they were rising to the top of the league. And speaking yeah, of absolutely. some of these other uh, rotational players that could be pretty good, Um, We're going to refer to those guys as the Expendables because ever since Durant and Ibaka and Westbrook have got there, the rotation cast, except for Nick Collison, has has changed every year. And especially the shooting guard and center positions have been where they've been trying to fortify and get better at, but they've been unable to do so. And it's a real interesting dynamic. Can they surround those three guys with enough talent to get to a title? Yeah, absolutely. That's a really good uh, uh, thing to call it the Expendables because really that's what shooting guard and center has been for Oklahoma City um, since James Harden left. And obviously they really haven't had a center to play. They made they, uh, they made the trade for Kendrick Perkins a few years ago. Of course, that really didn't work out. They've been trying right. to get rid of him for a while, finally did. But uh, they do have some options at, uh, at center, especially with Steven Adams. And uh, Enos Cantor, who came on, he was great. He was playing great with um, Westbrook. He's not a good defender, of course, but awful on the defender. Pick and roll, yeah, yeah. But uh, he plays really well on offense with Russ, so I think that could give him the starting nod over Adams. 
but I, I like Adams. He's a he's a younger player. He still has uh, a lot of potential that he could get to. He was a favorite of mine coming out of college, coming out of Pittsburgh. Uh, so I think that he could. I think that he could surpass Cantor, but I think Cantor is going to start out the start out the regular season as the starting center. Right. Um, I mean, obviously, Cantor got the big money this off season. He got the right. huge extension, seventy million dollars. But yeah. I mean, if you could look at those two players and have two more polar opposite centers on your team, I don't know yeah. like how it would even be possible. I mean, <laughs> Adams is a rugged, defensive-minded center who's going to be kind of an enforcer down low, and Cantor is a offensively polished big man who may as well just open up the lane and allow every other guard to just drive <laughs> to the basket. Pretty much, um, yeah. For me, that would uh, incline to say that I would like to bring Cantor off the bench, but I think it really doesn't matter who starts um, or who comes off the bench between those two. I think the the question will be who finishes games, and for me, that's got to be Adams because you're yeah, going to need the, the defense at the end of the games, and you don't need any more scoring when you got Durant and Westbrook plus Ibaka. Right, absolutely. I agree with you. And I think that if – I think giving Cantor all that money – I've talked about this for a while. I'm not sure if, if Durant can come back and be the player he was and stay consistently healthy because a lot of times foot injuries are lingering injuries that will uh, come up again and again during a career. So I think giving Cantor all that money was kind of insurance in case Durant uh, leaves or isn't able to stay on the court uh, very often. Right. They have Cantor who you know is, is a decent player offensive uh, offensive threat he's obviously not Kevin Durant but he still you saw his uh, his chemistry with Westbrook was very good uh, towards the end of the season right and then their other young big man would be Mitch McGarry who's kind of an intriguing player because right. I've seen him do some strange things on a basketball court like get the defensive rebound dribble it up all the way up the court by himself as a yeah. 6'10 power forward or center and then make a nice bounce pass to a cutter and it's like yeah. big men shouldn't be able to do that but at the same time he'll struggle with like defending his man or yeah. other little things and he's got to be able to be more consistent for him to get playing time but there's definitely going to be opportunities for him to play now uh just talking a little bit more about some of these other expendables as we like to call them um they have a lot of wings and backup point guards that are going to be really important for them to weather potential injuries to Durant and Westbrook because as we've seen in the past couple of years, they're going to happen. So the new guy they've just brought in is Cameron Payne, and he's the guy who I think can have the biggest impact for them this year um, simply because we've seen what everyone else can do, and they can't do all that much. So he's the only guy who's an unknown, and you can you can honestly say he can make a huge impact for this year because – he, he shot up draft charts at the end of last year. He averaged over 20 points in college. Came out of nowhere as a sophomore at Murray State, of all places. So it's going to be interesting yeah. to see how he'll fit in on this Thunder team. And I think you'll start to see some two-point guard lineups with him and Westbrook with KD at the three. And that's going to be a real offensive uh, juggernaut, I think, uh, come the start of the season. Right, absolutely, and and Cameron Payne for me was one of my favorite players uh, going into the draft, and I know in our draft video that I, I said that he was he was a really good value pick, possibly a steal pick for the uh, for the Thunder. I I agree. I don't think he'll start the season as shooting guard, but I think as the season goes along, and Dion Waiters and uh, <laughs> DJ Augustine kind of show uh, oh, yeah. their their full capability. Yeah, I don't think they'll really be able to do too much for the Thunder. I think they're going to give Payne the starting job. And I think the biggest thing about him that makes him so different from Waiters and Augustine is that he's a really good um, distributor. And he doesn't, you know, he can score, of course, but he doesn't need to score like a Waiters and Augustine tries to do more, uh, so to speak. So that I think Payne can, can get the ball to Westbrook, uh, can get the ball to Durant and let them create and just put his, uh, put his teammates in good positions to score. Well... I would just disagree with you a little bit because DJ Augustine, I feel like, is more of a, a floor general at this point, but he does have the prior... He does... He is score first. I will say that. But at this point in his career, he's a solid backup point guard, and I think that's what he is. I think Cameron Payne can be a difference no, maker. No, yes, I agree. Um, yeah. But the real thing for them is 
Someone's got to start at shooting guard, and for them, it's been a black hole at that position ever since Tabo Cephalosha took a step backwards. So they're real options at this point because I don't see them starting Dion Waiters unless they're absolutely crazy. So the real options are Anthony Morrow, who is a good, a really good three-point shooter, but he can't do much else, or Andre yeah. Roberson, who's a really good defender, but he can't do much else. And that's the problem with them. They keep getting these incomplete players who they have to rely on to fill out their starting yeah. five, and it's really been costing them a lot of games. It has. It's hurt them the fact that their uh, rotational players are expendable, as we've said, yep. that they aren't really guys that you can keep and you can count on uh, when Russell Westbrook gets hurt or when Kevin Durant gets hurt, can step up and play good for you. And that's why I really like Cameron Payne, and I think he could be potentially the difference maker for them. Like you said, Augustine is a good, he's a very good backup point guard. I really like him, but he's not a, he's not a starter in my mind, and I think that that'll lead the way for Payne to get significant minutes and possibly be the starting uh, starting shooting guard going forward. Right, and I think the key to the to the Thunder season is going to be Billy Donovan bringing in a new approach and allowing for things like Cameron Payne to get playing time, which I don't think would have happened under right. Scott Brooks. He really didn't allow Jeremy Lamb and, and Perry Jones to, to grow on that team. And those guys were, uh, yeah. were great talents. I mean, yes, they had their flaws, and we'll see how they do in their new locations and in Charlotte and in Boston. But he really didn't set up an environment for them to, to learn and to grow as basketball players. And so we'll see how Billy Donovan can – what he can do in allowing Cameron Payne to grow. And I think he's going to do a great job – for that offense specifically, and getting the ball to move a little bit more. Because it gets a little stuck in, in Westbrook's hands, and he does too much sometimes. And that's why he gets these high turnover Absolutely. numbers. But if they can bring in a more, uh, an offense with more ball movement and flow, I think that would be a great addition yes. to this team. Yes, I agree with you. And I think the worst thing about, um, about Scott Brooks towards the end of his tenure there in uh in OKC is that he kind of grew complacent he kind of was okay with you know what the Thunder they, he was just okay with them playing the way they played and you know getting to the playoffs and maybe not you know succeeding to their full extent and that's why I think at least the front office ultimately let him go and brought in some new blood hopefully someone like Billy Donovan who has a lot of experience who will uh, be able to help this team and, and possibly get them over the hump and get them an NBA championship. Right, no doubt. I mean, that's going to be the key for the Thunder this year. they got to be able to win a championship or at least advance very far into the playoffs to really cement Kevin right. Durant coming back for the next season. All right, guys, that's what we have to think about Oklahoma City Thunder for this upcoming season. Let us know what you think. Please subscribe. Thank you.